Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art. Today is Monday, June 5th, 2017, and this morning we're going to talk about the auction results that Christie's had last week in Hong Kong during their late May sale. Ran on May 30th and 31st, two days worth of auctions. They had five catalogs. Here they are. They're on our site as they always are. And uh, they had a really great week over there. They had a really great couple of days. A few minor disappointments, a couple of surprises. But overall, the market uh, was very happy to see this sale. And uh, we're going to start first with this painting by Hang Da Chen. Um, he passed away in 1983. He was one of the probably the greatest 20th century modern Chinese painter. Uh, had a fascinating life, lived all over the world. He even had a studio in Brazil for a while. Uh, this particular painting had been in the uh, uh, Ma Yuntang collection for a number of years. It was sold, and, and here it is being offered. It did great. This was a single owner catalog, by the way, a single lot catalog. catalog. It brought $13,212,000. I think that's a record for this artist, and justifiably so. This is one of his great works. And if you're sort of interested in his style, come read the catalog. It'll explain to you how he developed his technique, splatter technique, and uh, how he pioneered uh, 20th century modern Chinese art. Worth reading. And then moving along to this, this was the Yongshan Amphora vase, double dragon amphora. Extremely uh, desirable form, and as you can see by the uh, photograph of the color, the, the cover of this, this thing had amazing color, and it's all, with celadons, it's always about the color and the glaze and then the form. And this was a fabulous form and a fabulous color. Uh, there was a, some question about how well it would do among a few. And my, myself, I'm always interested to see how things do that have been previously sold in the last 20 years. And uh, it didn't seem to affect this at all. It brought $18,350,000 uh, or $351,000 U.S. Uh, did really well and it had a tremendous catalog to accompany it. But it is probably one of the best of its type in the world. Um, uh, just amazing quality and they show you other examples which is always fun to see. Uh, it's very interesting to, to compare. So that sale did well and then we chug along over here to the Imperial sale, important Chinese ceramics. And this sale also had uh, great results and uh, we're going to start, uh, we'll back it up here, hold on. We're going to go back to here, this barbed rim. This was lot 3006. A rather nice, big, 24-inch barbed-rimmed uh, uh, Longkorn Celadon from the uh, Hung Mu period. Uh, beautiful quality. It did have, as I understand, a little bit of wear on the surface here, which is fairly typical with these Celadons. But it didn't impact the price too much. It brought $626,941. But it's a big one. It's a very, very big plate. And here's the back of it, is what you'd expect to see with the, with the ring. And then we get over to this. This was lot 3008. And this is a young low period uh, charger, a little smaller, just a hair under 24 inches, about 23 and a half inches. Uh, uh, great piece. And the, all of these Celadons had come from the, uh, the Roger Balanich collection. Um, and this one did extremely well. It brought $781,741. Monster price, but a great Celadon. And uh, the, 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 this, this consigner, I think, had six or seven lots on the sale. All of them did just fine. All of them brought at or above estimate. This particular piece doubled its high estimate. All right. And then we're going to move over to this. This was lot 3011. Uh, I like this. This was a, a, a two-color yellow and red uh, lacquer Wan Li uh, double dragon uh, dish with its Japanese box, no less, and it had been bought in the uh, 1970s. And uh, just a wonderful example. Not very large. These aren't terribly big some of the time. This was only eight inches in diameter. Uh, didn't hold it back, though. It brought $239,000. $239,940, which is a good price for that. Uh, and lacquers, as you remember from a couple of sales ago, other lacquers, uh, Ming lacquers especially, did very well. So uh, that market seems vibrant and strong. And then there was this. This was lot 3025, three, uh, uh, 3, and this was a really fine uh, Yongchen uh, Markin period overglazed red dragon with underglazed blue clouds. 
uh, vase, uh, be beautiful done. They, they referred to it strictly as a dragon vase. And it was nice size, it was almost 12 inches tall, which is good size for this form. And uh, it was estimated at 780,000 to a million. It uh, went over its high estimate for a million uh, ninety-one thousand three hundred and forty-two dollars. So there you go. And there was a lot of interest in this. This was a particularly attractive piece, and uh, the f the shape was a, a bit atypical. So uh, it did really well. It did just great. And this was the cover lot of the sale. This is lot thirty uh, three thousand and thirty. And uh, it was a very attractive six-inch jar. It had been sold by Christie's previously in Amsterdam uh, uh, about uh, 16 years ago. It was now re-offered again, uh, taken out of a collection or wherever it has been. Who knows? And uh, it did really well. It brought $1,065,343. So not far from $2 million for a six-inch jarlet. But beautifully colored. Uh, the coloring on this, the enameling was just bright and strong and well-defined and the boys pattern is always popular. People love these, love that pattern and uh, I love the kid with the yellow banner waving it and the boy on the hobby horse right in the center. Uh, not everybody uh, realizes they, they had hobby horses in China. Some of those interesting little factoids. Anyway, moving along. Um, was this. Uh, this, is, this is a good uh, heads up for any, anybody out there that ever tells you soapstones don't bring uh, real money. Um, they always think of soapstones as being sort of the, uh, the, the weaker you know, brother to jade, which it often is. But um, this was lot 3038, and it was a collection of jade seals that they got a hold of to sell. And, and this, this jade brought 400, I mean, this, this soapstone brought $441,181. Just a great price. It was a beautifully carved uh, piece, though. <clears throat> if you come over to the site and you click that little magnifier at the top, you can blow it up and bring it up and get a good look at this. There it is. Just beautiful color. And notice how the uh, carver used the, uh, 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 up in here, used the, the changes of color in the, in the stone itself to create flowers and really worked it beautifully. And the seal underneath is, is spectacularly well carved. And uh, it did really well. So, bravo. Now, moving along, this was one of the surprises in the sale. It didn't sell. Lot 3138, a Southern Sung um, uh, Guan type Long Quan Celadon. Uh, I thought this was wonderfully attractive. Um, I thought it was a beautiful face, and I thought it would do really well. I, I'm, I was absolutely, and the estimate didn't seem crazy. It was 650000 to a million dollars. And uh, it never got off the ground, it didn't go anywhere. Um, and nobody knows why. Somebody probably knows why. It, it may. The only thing I can think of is that maybe it had been on the market over in Asia or somewhere in the world for a while and was unable to find a buyer. Uh, so they, they, um, somebody put it, uh, um, put it in an auction to, to move it along. Um, the last time it was a, in a Japanese collection. It was acquired uh, uh, in July of 1983. It was the last time it was publicly on the market. But you never know. These things can be on the market privately uh, all the time. So who knows? But uh, it may sell post-auction and negotiated sale. The things often do. And then the la last uh, lot we're going to talk about in the uh, Imperial sale, porcelain sale, was 3215. This is a very unusual vase. 18th century Kong um, done in um, sort of, you know, the, the, the uh, 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 Famille Rose with lime green ground of Western figures, though, which is very unusual. And it was on all four panels, no rain mark, uh, and it did uh, extremely well. It brought $441,181, which is well over the estimate, about 20% over the high estimate. And, uh, but a rare type, an extremely rare type. And I love, the, I love the scene on here with the Westerner running off carrying the vase with the flowers coming out of it. Uh, and they're in China gathering things, apparently. But uh, just a beautiful example all, all the way around. And, um, and then we're going to move over to here. We're going to get now into the perfect countenance sale, the Buddhist stuff. Um, I'm not going to, I can't cover everything here because there's so many lots, but the, I'm going to say hit, hit the highlights. And one of the highlights of this sale, of course, was the, uh, the cover lot. Um, we talked about it in last week's video, the preview video. There it is. Uh, nice bronze, 15 inches high. Spectacular quality, just the best quality. The casting, the folds of the, of the robes across the bottom, over his shoulder, the, the countenance of his face, the downward cast eyes. This perfect symmetry, the beautiful elongated lobes, 
the beadwork, all of it. And uh, still had the original plate on the bottom. And this was estimate on request. And I think last week we thought three to five million, somewhere in there. Well, it went through that and ended up at uh, 6.5 million and change, almost 6.6 .6 million. And uh, just uh, had a lot of interest in it. It was a great bronze. And uh, bronzes continue to have a lot of traction in the market. If you get a good one, uh, you can expect to get a very good price. And here's another one. This was lot 2807 right afterwards, uh, or a couple lots over, um, was this. It was a, a smaller one, a 10-inch uh, figure. It, it uh, had beautiful quality, though, spectacular quality carving. Uh, it had an inscription on it. It had everything going for it. And it brought over a million dollars. It brought, uh, what's the price on this? I want to check to be sure I get it right. $1,246,142. I know you generally people think of these, 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 these types as not bringing that much, but this was an elegant and pretty rare form. And you can come and read about it and, and, and learn more about the form and why it did so well. And then last in this sale was this. This was a very unusual piece. It was a Wan Lee um, alms pot with an inscription on it. And um, 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 excuse me, not Wan Lee. Uh, 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 Yong Chen, Chin Lung, early Chin Lung, cyclical date of 1737 uh, piece, beautifully inscribed. It was probably commissioned during the Yong Chen period and then finished. But there it is, beautiful example, uh, elegant uh, calligraphy on it, and uh, on a really lovely stand to boot with the lid, still had the lid. And uh, people wanted it. It brought $239,000 right smack in the center of its estimate. Uh, really beautiful uh, piece. And uh, it was bought in 2000, 2001 in London from, um, from a dealer. All right, and then we move along over to the Jades. This is the last catalog. And this, was, this was one of the great successes, I think. This had 100% of the lots sold. This was a private collection of, of, of a lot of Han uh, Jade ornaments, uh, sword guards, necklaces, and all that. And this was, uh, uh, the, the cover lot did particularly well. We'll get right to it. There it is, lot 2711. Uh, it was a suite of um, uh, uh, Qilong sword guards and uh, fittings. And just beautiful, beautiful set, uh, elegant quality. <clears throat> it did really well. It brought $1,091,000. And, it, and it's, it's, as I said, it's Western Han dynasty. What's interesting is, is, that, is that a few years ago, these pieces weren't that popular. Um, the Qing Jades were all the rage. Now these seem to be getting more and more interest, and uh, this, this consigner had built up a, a fabulous collection. So uh, we're going to move along and see what the other things did. You have, um, uh, let me see here, uh, get this right. You have this one. This is lot 2733. And this, this was a, a really beautiful uh, by disc or B, as they sometimes call them. It was five inches in diameter. Uh, extremely good quality, obviously, and it brought $503,000. You don't get any better than that. And, uh, and well, I, I should, now I'm going to back up and say for a B, it, they do get better than that. You get this one. This one brought a little more. This one brought $704,000, uh, but just elegantly carved, beautifully done with the, with the, uh, with the chimera, the foo and the, the chimera in the center. Um, there's the piece right there. This was a small one, uh, a little over three inches in diameter, and did really well, $704,000. Uh, you know, that's a heck of a number. And there it is, all right? And that's pretty much it for the uh, sales. All, everything did great. Everything in these auctions did great. A uh, couple of minor um, things didn't sell, uh, as always happens. But um, it all bodes well for the market. and. Uh, Christie's just has been on a tear lately. On th now they're on three continents. They had the New York sale that did so well, the London sale. And um, I, my understanding is that Sotheby's is coming up with some great things uh, in their next series. So uh, we'll see. All right, it's always interesting. And I'm going to do a, also do a video on a, on, on a pair of vases that were at the bottom sale. Uh, a, an old friend of mine, a um, pretty good friend of mine, wrote the, wrote the uh, catalog. And um, they're fabulous. All right, and that's it for today. Uh, have a great week, and um, enjoy your day, and uh, we'll see you later this week with the regular weekly. All right, and if you don't subscribe, uh, please do. Uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you have a question, ask it. We're happy to answer questions. Okay.
So long for now. Bye-bye.